This is our updated VN video editor tutorial for beginners. We're gonna cover all the key video editing tools and features that you need to know so you can start editing videos like a pro using the VN app on Android, iPhone, or Mac. All right, so here we are in VN video editor. Now I'm showing you this tutorial on an iPad, but the process is exactly the same on iPhone, on Android, and on a Mac as well. So this is what you'll see when you first open up the app, you'll be able to see all of your existing projects on here. But we're gonna go ahead and make a new project. So we're gonna hit this little plus button down the bottom. I just wanna call out that I am on the free version of VN Video Editor here. Yes, there is a paid version, which does unlock some extra things like an unlimited amount of projects you can have, unlimited template creation, enhanced project sharing, extra fonts and materials and things, and no ads. But the free version itself is also absolutely amazing. And again, that's what I'm using here. So we're gonna to go to new project. You then need to pick your primary video footage. So I'm gonna pick this clip here. And don't worry, you can come back and add more clips later, but pick your core primary footage here first. And you could select multiple clips here. Say if you had three pieces of primary footage that you wanted to import, then you could select those here. So I'm gonna go ahead with this first one here and hit this little next button down the bottom. And this then takes us to our main editing interface. So up the top here, this is our preview or our playback area. This is where we can watch back and preview our edit. Down the bottom here is our main timeline interface. Now, if you are on a touch device, a phone or an iPad or something, you can pinch to zoom down the bottom here on this area. You can also tap and swipe along. You can click and drag if you're on a computer as well. And these menus and these items and things down the bottom here can change depending on what it is you're actually doing. Now, if you're not seeing everything down the bottom here, it might be cropped off if you're using a smaller screen. You can swipe across down the bottom here. Or if you're on a desktop, some of these features might be shown up on the side here. Now the actual editing timeline down here is broken down into some really clear different layers. So we see we've got our main video track here, and we can always tell them apart by the little icons, but we've also got an extra layer here above it to add stickers or extra overlay and B-roll footage. Above that is where we'll add in our text and subtitles, and above that is where we can add in music and sound effects. We can also preview our video here in full screen by pressing this button here, and we can shrink it back down using this one here. Now to play back our video at any point, we've got a play button here, or if you do have a keyboard attached, you can just use the space bar key as well to start and stop. We can jump to the end of our edit at any time, pressing this button and back to the start at any time, pressing this one. But the first thing you wanna do here is lock down your video format. So you can see here, we've got this set to original, which is how we'll actually want it for this project. But let's say that we wanted to create a different version of this. Let's say that we wanted to edit this into a portrait video for TikTok stories, reels. Then we can just select that here and that's gonna convert our project here to that format. So you can see they've got a lot of different options here for different types of videos you can create. We're gonna go ahead and leave this on original, but know that you can come back later and reformat your videos easily using this functionality up the top here. All right, so we've got our primary video footage in down the bottom here. What you wanna do now is start to trim down this footage. You wanna remove any bad takes, any mistakes, anything that you don't want to actually have in your finished video project. Now for this, I generally like to zoom in on our timeline here so I'm getting more control over what's actually happening. But this also means that we can see our audio waveforms here so we can see the pieces where I'm actually talking. So we can see as I hover across here that I'm not talking until this point here and this is around where we want the video to start. Now, as with most video editing apps and tools, there's only multiple ways that we can do essentially the same thing. I can click and drag this edge and then when I let go of dragging, then that is now where our video starts. Now let's jump across to the end of our video here. And this is something that you will wanna to remember to do as well. VN Video Editor, this is an amazing free tool, but it does put this title card at the end of each one of your new projects. So you do wanna make sure that you're removing that. So let's select on that and let's press delete either here or down here. And now that we're at the end of our video, let's find the piece where we want our video to finish. And I would imagine it's right here where I stop talking. So we could just come across to the end here, tap and hold and drag back to this point, or we can just hit the split button, the pair of scissors here, to cut our clip at this point. So we've now got two clips, one on the left and one on the right. So with this one here that we don't want, we can now press delete on that one and that clip is gone. So the idea here is that we're able to use a combination of these methods when we're editing down our footage, depending on what it is we're looking to do. 
So let's say I wanna remove this little quiet piece here, this gap between when I'm talking. I can use the scissors here to have a cut at that point. I could then select this clip here and grab this right hand side and slide it back to the end of where we want that piece removed. And when I let it go, that piece has now been removed. Likewise with this next clip here, I could make a cut here. We could then go back to the next piece where I start talking again, add another split. I could select that clip and let's delete it. Let's remove it from our timeline. The clip is gone and it's closed up that gap. So the idea here is you wanna go through, remove any bad takes, any mistakes, anything that we actually don't wanna have in our finished video project. Now, each of these clips or chunks of footage, you can actually pick up as well. So say if we want this clip here moved towards the end, we can just tap and hold on it and we can reposition this chunk of footage wherever we'd like it in our timeline. So once that's done, the next step is to add in any B-roll or overlay footage onto our timeline. So we can either just tap on this line here or tap on this little icon here. It says add a sticker or PIP. And PIP is picture in picture. So that's what we're talking about for an overlay here. So I'm gonna tap on the timeline. We're gonna choose insert stocks, which is other footage. I'm then gonna find a clip here, this one here. Now you can see it's gone ahead and dropped this entire clip down here onto our timeline above our bottom video layer. So it's actually sitting on top of it. Meaning that as we scrub through or play through this now, while we're seeing all this extra footage on the top, we would still be hearing me underneath. Now this clip up here also acts the same as our regular footage down the bottom here as well. Meaning that we can select on it, we can press and hold, we can pick it up, we can move it around. We've got these handles on the side here. If we wanna adjust the start time or the end time, we can add splits or cuts into it. So the idea now is we're gonna go through and find the section of this clip that we want to use here because it's a very long clip. So let's scrub across here then until we find a piece that we actually want to use from this. This is actually a video clip from our primal video Christmas party at the uh, inflatable water park. So there'll be a clip here somewhere that we can use, maybe going through this green tunnel here. So let's take it back a little bit. Let's start it here. We can add a split here. So we've cut this clip in two. Let's delete this first side here. So with it selected, we can press delete. Let's scrub through here. We look across and Ellie has fallen over <laughs> and keep coming through and Matthias laughing at her. So let's just say we want to stop this shot at this point. We can hit the scissors there, zoom in. Now is its own clip that we can then pick up and move around to wherever we want to use that clip in our video. So let's go across and find another clip in here that we'd like to use. Lots of people falling off, falling in the water. Some water droplets on the screen. That's always what you want. So there's a clip here. Here we go of Curtis doing a backflip. So let's add a cut just before that happens. So we're gonna split the clip here. We hit delete to remove everything before that clip. And let's just scrub through this here now. There is the backflip. Nicely executed and we'll stop the clip about here. Let's split that. We can then remove the rest of this. And we now have two overlay clips here. So you wanna go ahead now and add in your B-roll and overlay clips into your project. Once that's done, we're gonna come back to the start of our timeline here and we're gonna add in any text or titles into our videos. So we can come up here to this title layer here or hit the text button too. And we get to choose here if we wanna use a basic title or use a title template. I'm gonna go ahead and pick basic title for this one. You can see straight away we have a title text box here on the screen. We can double tap on that and we can start typing in Justin. Brown. And if you look down here on our timeline, we've now got an extra little clip here, which is that text box. And again, just like our other clips, we can press and hold on it. We can pick it up, we can move it around. We can adjust the length to make it longer or shorter on screen. But also with the text box itself, we can pick it up, we can move it around. We can resize it using the little boxes or handles here on the side. We can also double tap on it and that will give us some extra tools here to customize that up. So down the bottom here, if we press on this one here, there's some different templates and things in here that we can use and we can customize up. The next one across here is where we can pick our fonts. So let's pick this Marvel font, why not? And we can adjust the font size down the bottom here as well. We can then customize up our colors. Now we can either just pick from the colors down the bottom here. We can also pick a custom color so you can match up your branding and everything in here. Or there's also, again, presets up the top here that you can just click on and use or customize up from here. 
And this is where you can control the text color, the border, shadow, and background. And that title is added. Now we can also easily add some motion to this text here as well, because right now it just appears and then disappears. So with this title selected, you can see that we've also got this option here for motion. So let's press on that. And there are some basic animations that we can add in here. So there's a fade in, there is a scale, spin, slide, reveal, and gradient. And we can choose how long we want these effects to go over. So if we want a slow gradient, we can drag this out or a slow scale gradient. I mean, I'm a pretty simple kind of guy. I just probably stick with the fade in this case. Let's make it a little bit quicker and hit the tick to apply that. So now if we're playing this through, it now fades in. So that's a basic title. Now, if we come back here and tap to add in title and let's choose title templates this time, then in here, we've got some more animated graphics and titles and things that we can use. So let's take this one here, for instance, we can customize up all of this text and the animation and everything will all work fine. And this is just on the titles area here. We've also got subtitles, time, mark, bubble, messaging. If you want to replicate someone messaging you, there's a lot of different options in here but I'm just going to cancel back out of that one. So you wanna go ahead now and add in any text or titles into your video at this point. Once that's done, we're gonna add in any effects and transitions into our video. So to add a transition between two clips, we can see that we've got this little plus button down the bottom here. And if we select on that, then we've got a bunch of preset transitions that we can use. So there's things like your fades, zooms, camera shake as well. So we've got fade to black, fade to white. There's actually some pretty cool ones in here as well. Like these shake ones are pretty good. Whips around. And if we actually tap on this, we can choose the direction of that whip or even light. Now, instead of applying a transition like this, let's just cancel out of this. What we would normally do because both of these two clips here are very much the same, right? We've just removed some mistakes or something. So I wouldn't normally use a transition when the two clips are essentially the same. Instead, what I would do is zoom in on one of the clips to make it look like essentially another shot or even a different camera angle, but just from that one piece of footage. So we're gonna select this second clip here and it could be done to the first or the second, it doesn't matter. And we wanna double tap on it. And what that lets us do is up the top here, we can then pinch to zoom to make this a little bit bigger. And we can tap and hold and we can move this around. And let's just preview this now between the two. So we've got the before and we've got the after. So it's a bit of a subtle difference between these two clips here, but in order to really sell this effect, you really wanna try and keep the eyes in the same or similar positions. You see this is a little jarring right now. Let's just bring this one down a little bit. How about here? Okay, so we scrub through this now. It's much closer, it's a lot less jarring, but it's still subtle enough for the viewer that has changed the shot up to keep it interesting. Now in terms of your B-roll or your overlay footage, if we select on those, then again, we've got the same motion effects up here that we can add as well, which act as transitions. So we can choose what our in animation is. So that again, could be a fade or a spin or something. And we can also choose what our out animation is. It could be a spin or a slide, or even just a basic fade. Or there's also some different loop animations in here too. Can't say I've ever used these, probably will never use these, but they're in here if you need them. I'm gonna go none on loop animation. Let's hit the tick to apply that. And we've now got an in animation where it spins into that clip. And then at the end, it fades back to me. Now in terms of other effects and things that you've got in here, there is a whole lot down here under FX. So you can add some extra movement or essentially you could even use these as transitions in here as well. By just selecting these, you can see that they're just added to your timeline here. And again, you can pick it up, you can move it around, you can adjust the start and end time on these as well. I'm gonna cancel out of this now. We can speed up and slow down our clips using the speed controller down here. So we can either use the basic settings of regular where we can speed up our clip by dragging it to the right or we can slow down our clip by dragging it below the one time speed to slow it down. Or we can come back over here to curves and we can get more advanced with this. There are some presets in here for different speed control or speed ramping really is what it is, where we can customize these points as to how fast or slow we want the clips to be at any given time. So we can start it here at one time speed, we can slow it down then speed it up for this section, slow it back down to normal speed just by grabbing these markers. Once you've added in your effects, next we're gonna add in any music or sound effects. So we wanna come up to the music layer here and we wanna tap on it 
And from here, we can either choose music, sound effects, or we can actually record our own voiceover directly into the app here too. I'm gonna to choose music. Now, while there are music tracks in here and included in most video editing tools, what I strongly recommend and what we use are services like Epidemic Sound and Artlist so that you know that you're not gonna have any licensing issues with your music at a later stage. So we're gonna come over here to My Music, go more. Let's import from the Files app. We've got a track here. Let's choose open. That's imported our track here now. So we can go and select that here and let's choose use. We can also trim this down here if we'd like to. So if we know that there's some edits or adjustments we wanna make at this point, we can do that. If we know that we're gonna be creating a video where we're gonna be editing to the beat, then we can also flag our beats here as well. So we can play through our song and we can just hit this little marker here whenever there is a beat. I'm gonna cancel out of this. We're just gonna import the file as it is by hitting the tick. And that's now gonna show up at the top of our timeline here. And just the same as all of our other clips, we can tap, we can hold on it, we can pick it up, we can move it around. We've got those handles on here so we can adjust the start and the end times. And one of the things I like about VN Video Editor is if you come across the end of your timeline here, you'll see that it's actually cropped off the audio track at the end of our video. It doesn't leave it going over blank footage. So now that your music's in, you wanna play back through your video. You might find that you're making any minor adjustments to your timeline here to match the beat or to tighten up any of your edits so that it matches the vibe or matches the music track. From there, we're going to adjust our volume levels. And what I suggest you do here is you do it on your spoken piece, if it's a video like this first, or your primary audio first, and your music or any B-roll clips second. So we're gonna select this music track. I wanna come down here to volume, and we're just gonna drag this slider all the way down, so we're not gonna hear it. I'm gonna apply that. Next, we wanna come across to our first video clip here, and we can come down here to volume. Now this is something that VN Video Editor does a really good job of automatically getting your volume levels set correctly. So I very rarely find I need to make any adjustments to this, but if we do need to make the volume louder, then we can swipe this up here. If we need to make it quieter, then we can drop it down the other way. But ideally you're playing through your video here with headphones on, so you're getting an accurate representation of what this is sounding like. Once you've got this set right, you can actually choose here, apply to all, and that's gonna apply it to the remaining clips on here as well. From there, once that's done, I'd check out the B-roll or overlay clips that you've got and adjust the volume levels on those. So if I don't want any sound from these clips, I would just be turning that right off here and apply that one. And likewise for the next clip here, we can mute the volume on those two. From there, I'd then be adjusting your music tracks or sound effects. And again, we'll select this, we'll come down here to volume and we can increase this to the point where we'd like it. Again, this is a creative thing. There's some videos where you want music louder, others quieter. For us, what we generally find with our types of videos is around 27 to 33% is normally a good starting point depending on the audio track. So let's say that we wanted our volume level at the level that it is right now up until this point. We could then come here, add a keyframe. So we can see that we've got this marker here. And that's where our volume can start to increase. We want our volume to be maximum. Let's add another keyframe at this point. Let's come down to volume and then we can increase this. Let's say at this point, we want it to be hitting 52. It says here 52. We can hit the tick and we want it at volume 52 until about here. Let's add a keyframe again and then we'll drop our volume back down. So let's come across a bit further to where we want our volume back at our original volume level. We can then come down here and we can set that to where we'd like it. So what we've essentially done here is that we're at 33% volume and then increases for this piece here and then decreases back down at this point. So it's awesome that there's keyframes in here as well for more advanced control. The next step then is to adjust the colors, the color grade, the color effects in your video. And again, I suggest you start here on your primary footage, the first clip. So there's a couple of different ways that we can do this. We can come down here to filters and there are preset filters or adjustments in here. Think of these like Instagram filters that you can apply to your clip. So if you find something in here that you like the look of, then you could just run with that. Again, this is a creative thing and there's a lot in here to choose from. Now you also have a slider down here. So if you like the look of this one, but it might be too intense, we can drop it down and this will blend this back with our original. 
But if we wanna dial it in even further, then we can come over here to adjust, and then we can really dial in each of these elements, exposure, contrast, and so on. There's a lot of different control in here. So we can do this from starting with a filter. So let's go back here to original, and then we can make our own adjustments from scratch. So if we were doing that, I would start off first with the overall exposure, and I'd make sure the brightness was how we wanted it, maybe somewhere around there. I'd then jump across to the color temperature, so if we slide this one way, it's gonna make it cooler. If we slide it the other way, it's going to add more warmth to it. So maybe around there somewhere. I could then boost the colors a little bit with the vibrance here. So let's increase this a little bit. We might also wanna adjust the sharpness on this too. And when you're done, we can hit this tick box here to apply to all of our clips. So they've all now got that same look or effect applied to them. Now we also have the same controls with our B-roll and overlay clips too. We can select on those and we can come down here to filters and we can apply the same settings. Once you're finished with that, then it's time to save out your video. So you wanna come up here to the share button and then in here, we can either use the automatic settings which are based off this primary footage that you imported. So most of the time I find that I just leave the settings here or if we wanna make some adjustments and we can kick over to manual mode, we can adjust our video resolution, the frame rate and the bit rate, the quality. I love that there is this here because we can really create some high quality videos in VN Video Editor using this control. But for this one, I'm gonna switch back to auto and we just hit export and our video will save out. Once that's done, it's a good idea to play back or preview your video, make sure it looks the way you want, sounds the way you want, and then your video is complete. That help you speed up your editing in any app or software. Make sure you download our free video editing process, which is linked on screen. It'll help you edit step-by-step step in the correct, most efficient order, making your editing faster and easier. And also don't forget to check out the links down in the description. We've got a bunch of resources down there to help you too. I'll see you in the next one.